So, a very warm welcome here to my presentation. I'm Christoph Schmieding and I had the pleasure um, to support several um, transformation efforts over the last few years. Um, today I would like to talk about the friction between autonomy, um, freedom on the one hand and responsibility on the other hand. Yeah? Because I do observe that this phenomenon is uh, quite usual um, for companies that make themselves on the way towards a more um, self-organization, um, to more self-organization. And um, I don't only have the experience um, as a consultant from um, various client organizations, but I'm also having first-hand experience from Roas Lua Consulting. We are about 100 people and we are also um, very self-organized, or at least we, we say so. But enough for talking, let's um, dive into um, the context. Um, when I observe um, um, new, uh, new organizations where I deal with, yeah, I get to them and talking about more implementing more agility, of getting more self-organized, of um, getting more um, the responsibility to, to individuals and team members, then I often observe that uh, suddenly people actually get the following picture in, in, in their mind. Yeah? So a huge um, adventure playground, there's a huge ball pit and it's, um, it's about that the employees have as much uh, fun as possible. Yeah? And um, I, I do believe um, that this is um, kind of over exaggerated. that's why I also um, put it there on um, the, the very blunt face um, everyone can do whatever the fuck they want, yeah? and, and I think that's key. This is also in, in line with the very um, first um, consulting assignment I had almost um, nine years ago, where also the, the client um, said to me, Christoph, you yeah, actually did all good, all well, yeah? but please yeah, don't let us feel the colleagues, that the colleagues feel too cuddly, yeah? that they throw cotton wool on each other, put their cotton balls and hit each other. Um, that doesn't uh, should be that shouldn't be be um, that what we are aiming for, huh? and I'm always like, is it really like that? Huh? Um, probably not. Yeah? Probably it's more like um, the picture um, behind me. Um, like we don't probably have an adventure playground with a bowl pool, but rather have um, table football, free fruit. Huh? No matter which um, image. Um, resonates more with you or which of them is more let's say um, closer to your reality I, I do believe um, that there is a lot of prejudice um, regarding um, that having fun um, being happy at work it could be detrimental to economic um, success and I want to spend the rest of my presentation to dig deeper in that myth um, in order to, to explore if, if that really um, is the key. But let's take uh, one step at another and um, let's ask the question, is it really justified yeah, to have these um, prejudices that, um, well, kind of emerged over, over the last uh, few years? Yeah? Can we resolve the dilemma between um, economic success, autonomy and being happy at work? And I do think there, there is the possibility. When we look actually um, closer to the places where those um, myths and prejudices emerged um, over the last few years, yeah, we rather find the opposite. Yeah? I'm, I'm coming very much from, from the HL context and when you look there at the um, approaches that had actually emerged already in the 90s, um, it was all about getting better results delivered. Yeah? So the, come up with self-organization, they come up with a more team autonomy, um, not because of the sake of, of just implementing that, but of the sake of uh, delivering better results. Yeah? And um, part of it was also due to the fact that, um, that the bad experience they had in the past were um, majority or were kind of attributed, at least um, in some part, to the fact that decisions were made Actually, the majority of the decisions were made by people that were really, really far away from the impact that the decisions made. Yeah? And that's why they came up with self-organized teams, with teams having autonomy and making their own decisions. Yeah? It was not about um, being happy at work. I think it's a very cool side product, but um, what I'm, I'm, I'm looking for is to, to give you the idea that it was not the, the, the very aim. Yeah? And if 
you look at um, some of those um, new ways of working methods, for example, like Scrum, they are really disciplined, yeah? or, or they require discipline. Yeah? In, in Scrum, there's even a dedicated role, the Scrum Master, that is responsible for uh, making sure that we adhere and, and held high um, the core values of, of actually core values and principle of this, this working method. Yeah? And I do know um, that not all of the modern way of working methods are as rigorous as, as Scrum, but I want to, that you take the core idea of um, that most of them have in their core, or most of the um, HL working methods have in their core um, those um, very strict elements. Yeah? And that's far away from the prejudice and, and the myths we, we've explained uh, a few seconds ago. Yeah? Another topic is um, that at the core of many of those modern um, way of working methods is um, the PDCA cycle. Yeah? It's, it's rather old the PDCA cycle, emerged already in the, in the 50s, 60s. And it's about planning, doing, checking, acting. Yeah? It's, it's a very simple cycle. Even children can understand it. And you have to go over and over again to improve yourself yeah? or to improve your team. Yeah? And while this um, cycle itself is, is rather simple, as I, as I said, even children can understand that, what is difficult, however, is the persistency, the consistency of going through it over and over again, yeah? to keep at it, yeah? to keep at it, to say, yes, we want to improve. And that's why we're doing another retrospective, although we did a retrospective already two weeks ago. Yeah? And I don't take myself out of that, yeah? although I do think that I'm actually a, a strong advocate of, of those uh, modern ways of working. But um, I often find also myself that I say, oh no, not another retrospective. Yeah, we have so many more important um, um, things to do, let's skip that. But that's exactly the point, to not skip it. Yeah? Because we have to be self-disciplined to work on our own improvement. Yeah? And um, that's the key. And every one of you that have already uh, once in a the time an ambitious um, sporting goal, for example, running a half marathon or running even a marathon, they exactly know what this means. Yeah? So putting yourself um, in a very strong self-disciplined um, way of acting to improve yourself. And this is key in order to achieve actually the bold um, targets, for example, um, running a marathon. Let me uh, skip back now um, for a moment back to the myth of um, everyone can do whatever the fuck they want. Yeah? Um, when I see such situations, um, I very often use this quote actually from, from, um, from the Spider-Man movie yeah, where um, a wise um, person tells Spider-Man, you have um, of course great power, yeah? but with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah? And I think that's exactly the thing. Yeah? It's the, two sides of the same coin. Yeah? Of course, in modern um, self-organized uh, companies, you can make your own decisions. Yeah? As a team, as individuals, you can make your own decisions. Yeah? But you or the team then have to bear also with the consequences. Yeah? It's not like that we say, oh, we go just for the, for the decisions. Yeah? We, let's skip that responsibility. Yeah? Let's skip the consequences. They can remain with the managers. Yeah? That's not what we are aiming for. Um, that has to be in a balance. Yeah? And a really nice picture that actually um, um, further clarifies that is um, the, the one I have here uh, from Henrik Nieper. He, he wrote it already several years ago. And it's a poor field matrix and I will briefly um, explain it. Um, for the context um, of, of this matrix, um, we do have a team and the team has a bold vision. Yeah? The team wants to cross the river. Yeah? And um, now the four quadrants, actually, they um, describe four leadership styles, um, which can be used in order to lead the team um, to, to make that happen, yeah? to make that um, bold vision happen. Yeah? And um, we start actually, or it's, it's a matrix, yeah? and on the one side is um, the autonomy and um, freedom, basically. Yeah? Um, it's the upper one here, the, the lower one here, and on the other um, is the alignment. Yeah? So it also deals with the friction between those. Yeah. And um, let's start with the first quadrant. It's um, on the on the left hand um, up up or the left bottom side. Yeah. 
so we get it right now, left to bottom side, um, where we neither have autonomy nor alignment. Yeah? So we, we miss both actually. Yeah? And um, people don't know what to do, they are striving all in their own direction and they are rather unhappy. Yeah? And I think we all agree that's not the situation we want to, to end or, or start with. Yeah? That's why let's move a little bit up here yeah, in the left upper corner. That's um, an environment where the alignment is high but the autonomy is low. Yeah? Those are typically environments where leaders um, not only um, tell the, the team the, the vision or the objective, but also articulate or express very clearly what they believe or think should be done. Yeah? So in our example, it's not about only let's cross the river, but also telling them let's build a bridge. Yeah? Um, so, so it's very directive. Yeah? And people tend to be okay with that, probably also because they are got used to it over, over the past years and, and decades and um, actually um, objectives are rather also uh, able to be achieved. Yeah? So it's, it's, it's a mix. Yeah? I think it's already better um, than um, the situation we had before. Yeah? On the right um, um, bottom corner, the, the quadrant, the third quadrant, actually is where um, autonomy is high and alignment is low. And these environments are exactly, let's say, the, 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 the ground where those prejudices, where those myths are, are actually coming from, yeah? um, all the things we, we had before. Yeah? Because people are kind of happy here, yeah? because they can do whatever they want, they can strive for their own desires, whatever. But um, in, in these environments, it's very difficult to, to achieve a common goal because everyone um, is, is kind of acting their own. Yeah? And the, the tricky part is that the leaders, they are kind of aware that something is not going well. Yeah? But they don't dare to say anything because they don't want to interfere with the self-organization. Yeah? They want to, they insist to, to, to um, um, intervene basically. Yeah? And so it's more the situation we have here in the picture that the leader, she is like, okay, hopefully someone is working on the river problem. Yeah? So that's also a situation um, that we will want to avoid. Yeah? Um, when um, we look what a modern company should aim for, then of course it's the right upper one, yeah? where you have both, yeah? where you have high autonomy and high alignment. But is that feasible? Yes, we believe um, that's feasible. Yeah? It's feasible by communicating a clear and bold um, goal. Yeah? It's like um, we have to cross the river, we want to cross the river, and then giving the team the decision and the autonomy to decide how they want to achieve it. Yeah? So figure out how, yeah? figure out how we want to cross or how we could um, cross actually the bridge. So you give the team the autonomy in the, in the, in the implementation, in the how, how we are doing that. Yeah? And uh, what is also key, but I will come to that in a second, is that um, you give also very clear constraints to them. Yeah? Because I, it's a major difference if we have to do it fast or if we have to do it uh, cost efficiently. So that's adding more context to the vision, but I will get to that uh, in a second. And um, the, the, the cool thing about the picture is that it also dispels um, a second myth that is, um, um, recent, is, is um, very often associated with, um, with uh, modern self-organized um, organizations that they don't need leadership at all. Yeah? And that's not true. Yeah? They need leadership, especially in the um, dimension of vision, in the dimension of giving constraints, because otherwise it, it won't work. Yeah? The system won't work. But let's dig into more, more detail to that. Yeah? So, as I said, uh, we need a vision. Yeah? We need a bold target um, we are aiming for. Yeah? The, the vision should be um, challenging but not impossible, should be emotional, should be evocative, should be pictorial, and it should inspire people um, to take the hard road of, of mastery. Yeah? And I think you know good wishes. Yeah? Um, and um, nevertheless, um, if you or nevertheless, if you like him or not, I think you can learn a lot from Elon Musk regarding wishes. Yeah? Did you watch actually the live stream um, a, a few weeks ago where um, they launched actually their, their new heavy rocket? Yeah, and it was a false start. Yeah, the, the, 
the rocket exploded one to two minutes after after um, departure from the from the um, spaceport, and um, I was amazed how happy people were, although it didn't went well. Eh? But um, they they realized that they are one step closer to their to their vision yeah, of, of conquering Mars, yeah? and and that's what the spirit should be like. Yeah? And there were, of course, um, dozens of other examples of, of shining visions. I think it's key that they have to inspire people. Yeah? They have to inspire people to get involved. Yeah? They have to inspire people to join the team to make the big effort of accomplishing it. Yeah? And that's key. While this topic of vision is kind of a, yes, we know that, Christoph, um, the next thing I, I think is, is even as important as the vision, yeah? it's the frame yeah? under which um, the vision has to be fulfilled. It adds more context, yeah? so the constraints, the frame adds more context, because without it, we kind of operate in a vacuum and um, there is little to guide us. Yeah? Um, let me um, briefly jump back to the river crossing example. So it's a big difference yeah? if we need to um, cross the river quickly and cheaply. Then we may need to build a raft. Yeah? Or it's a huge difference if we need to transport heavy goods over and over again, over the bridge and over the uh, river, um, and um, for a longer period of time, because then we do might need a bridge. Yeah? And of course, a bridge is more expensive and takes longer than building a raft. Yeah? But that's exactly the key. Yeah? Without the constraints, a vision is typically rather fuzzy. Yeah? So we need to, to add more and more context to it. And uh, think also of, um, our, of, of, of the metaphor of a picture frame. Yeah? Of course, you can put the picture on the wall yeah, without the frame. It's possible. But something is missing. Yeah? So this kind of should remind you always that um, the vision comes also um, together with um, our constraints. And what about the employees now? Should they just shut up and, and quietly um, implement um, all the steps necessary um, in order to achieve um, the vision within the, the constraints? No. If um, for the success of achieving the vision it, it's necessary to challenge the constraints, we should do so as a matter of course. But it's key to consult with the colleagues that initially gave you the vision and the initial constraints to kind of re-agree um, the new constraints. Yeah? So we um, are, are making sure that there is a continuous exchange between um, those who um, give actually the responsibility and those who take the responsibility. Yeah? Essentially, the aim is to have an, an, an agreed and then therefore aligned picture or, or a common picture at all time yeah? because that's what enables people to take the responsibility. So it's the handover of the vision and the constraints where, um, let's say, the magic of the responsibility, uh, responsibility flows. Yeah? And the, the development team or the team then itself they, is then in charge of um, doing everything necessary to, to reach the vision, each day one step closer. Yeah? So they come, have to come up with the best possible solution to do that. Yeah? And that's where they have their autonomy. That's where they have um, actually um, the decision-making power to take their own decisions, but also be with the consequences, as, as I said before. And to enable um, this, this kind of process of um, handovering um, responsibility, I, I do have a practical tip there. Um, so it's, it's very cool to increase and expand on um, those constraints over time. Yeah? Because very often I see people, um, individuals or teams, yeah, that are kind of overwhelmed by the large responsibility they suddenly get in, in such a process of implementing uh, a new working model that um, also allows for more autonomy. Yeah? And I always think there of the metaphor of uh, throwing a medicine ball. Like, like um, the leaders say, oh great, we are moving now to, to a, a working model where I don't have the sole responsibility, then I can give them uh, some of them to the team. Yeah? And, and then they say, there you go. Yeah? And then you throw the medicine ball um, towards the team. And those are very caught, yeah? because they're overwhelmed. Yeah? Um, suddenly they get the full responsibility. In the past, they had probably none. Yeah? 
So um, I, I recommend the process of increasing and expanding constraints over time. So they take more and more responsibility step by step and somehow the takeover of responsibility is, is, is therefore learned. Yeah? And at the same time, we have ensured actually that there is a continuous exchange on, on, on the constraints and also the progress on towards the constraints. I think practical tip. Um, within um, actually the constraints within the development, there is also leadership necessary. Yeah? But we have to move away um, from our traditional view of leadership and have to accept that we all lead. Yeah? And I would like to, to share with you the, this beautiful um, phrase um, from the circle way. It's actually a facilitation method where you discuss the topic in the, in the group. Yeah? And um, the circle way is that everyone in the, is sitting actually in a circle and everyone is allowed to speak what he or she thinks regarding this topic. Yeah? And um, there is no one um, allowed to interrupt. Yeah? And that's why we call it there is a leader in every chair because you lead the discussion, at least in the moment where you speak, because no one else is allowed to speak. Yeah? And, and I highly recommend also to, to try out um, this practice in some of your meetings. But um, for, for the sake of, of this presentation, I think I, I want to, to, to um, make clear that we all lead and we all are led by others, yeah? uh, for example, by colleagues. Yeah? And that we have to accept, we have to allow, we have to make space for that. Yeah? Even myself, I'm, I'm a kind of senior colleague in, in my um, company and sometimes I, I also give others the possibility to lead. Yeah? Um, all, although they are kind of below the hierarchy or, or have less experience because it's also cool to be led. Yeah? And, and this person doesn't mean to be more experienced, higher up in the food chain, whatever. Yeah? Um, that's so cool um, and it, it sounds so simple but it is not because we are moving in a, in a social system that is rather complex and we can predict everything in a quite linear way. Yeah? Um, I think that's, that's key to, to, to allow that. Yeah? And there will be always hierarchy, yeah? no matter if we have um, disciplinary leadership or not. Yeah? Um, and that's also okay, that's totally fine, yeah? whether we like it or not. Yeah? For example, there is hierarchy based on experience, on, on, on competency. Yeah? For example, an opinion carries more weight if it, the opinion comes from, from actually a colleague that has already experienced and faced already the challenge several um, times. Yeah? And this does make sense. Yeah? Of course, we, we kind of give uh, more weight to that. Yeah? And um, that's, um, I think, um, totally fine. And I often struggle um, with the fact that in, in modern self-organizing companies, hierarchy is very often demonized. Yeah? And say, no, we don't want that. Yeah? But it's there, we cannot avoid it. And this also leads to all those prejudices and myths we, we've um, explored actually um, so far today. I think it's key also in a, in a self-organized um, company that, you, that people don't challenge everything. Yeah? We have to get to a state where we trust also the decision makers that they made the decision in the best interest of all of us. Yeah? Um, I think you cannot involve everyone in everything because this will slow us down. Yeah? We, we want to avoid that. Yeah? That's probably possible for, for companies that have 10 um, employees, startups, whatever. But when you are getting to 30, 50, 100, as for example we did, you cannot involve everything in everything yeah? or everyone in everything. Yeah? That makes them um, will slow down the whole process. So that's why it's key that you have kind of guiding principles and I like the one here from, from Norman Kerr, um, it's the prime directive. Yeah? And this is so important because it, it the trust in others that they have taken um, the best possible decision um, in respect to the situation, in respect to their skills, in respect to the resources, whatever. Yeah? And it's okay also to take sometimes the wrong decisions. Yeah? I think that's um, where it's key that you have um, small iterations that you can actually um, 
change very quickly. I think we make the wrong decision, but we, we already know it one week after. And then let's take another um, direction and that's totally, um, that's totally fine. Yeah? Finally, one very practical tip. Um, we always tend to wear different hats in, in certain situations. Yeah? One example, um, I'm Christoph, I'm an experienced colleague um, in, in my company and therefore I very often support colleagues in a kind of advisory role yeah? to give them tips and hints for their particular um, consulting project. Sometimes I'm Christoph who is actually project manager for a client mandate and therefore is also responsible for the client and has to make the same or I have to make the final decision. Yeah? And in other moments, I'm Christoph, I'm part of the management team and therefore have to act in the best um, interest of our company and therefore I, I have to cut costs next quarter yeah? because we do have um, issues. I think that's normal for every one of us, for you, for me. Um, what my tip here is to be more conscious about yeah? with which head am I talking right now? Yeah? Do I talk to others with the head of um, being a colleague or do I talk to others with um, the head of being Christoph, um, part of the management team? Because I think it adds more context to the statements you were actually uh, um, telling. Yeah? And I think it's easier for colleagues then to digest what, what you are actually saying. And of course, you can not only take heads, you can also take caps. And in order um, for you to, to make it easier for you to understand in which role I am um, today, I gifted myself actually um, this beautiful cap um, here. And um, I would like to say thank you so much um, for, for tuning in, for, for listening. I would glad to hear also your feedback on and your thoughts on, on what I presented today. See you next time. Cheers.